Coming up, the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife for November, a beautiful gift from a very talented listener, and the Recurve Roundup. I'm going to show you 15 wicked folders. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments this past week was just something that made me feel good. Uh, Slasher Society 09 says, love the show. Your honest approach is the best. You're the Bob. And I'm not exactly sure what the Bob means, but I'll take it. I like it. Next up from Byron Lee. Uh, this was on his how I on my how I carry fixed blades. He says, just simply, I like this video. Thank you. Man, would that all the comments were like that. Uh, I like this video. Thank you. Thank you, Byron. Uh, it was my pleasure bringing it to you. Last of the favorite comments, <clears throat> and there were many and they were all great, but I like this one too. Long Rider 42, he's a, a frequent contributor to Thursday Night Live, says, I just bought one. He's talking about the uh, Roaring Fire tool roll that I just posted. I just bought one to organize all the tools I carry on my bike. A lot better than just keeping them in a plastic bag, no doubt, like I do now. I hope it's as nice looking as yours. By the way, and this is, uh, that was mine, full name is Roaring Fire Pioneer New Mini Tool Roll Bag. And I have no idea where Long Rider found that because I went to their website and I could not find an actual name for it. So uh, maybe as my wife likes to say, you don't read stuff. You don't read labels. You don't read stuff. You miss it that way. You also don't look behind things in the fridge. So Long Rider, thank you so much for uh, giving us the full name of the Roaring Fire Pioneer New Mini Tool Roll Bag. I'm going to have to change uh, the title of that video. But um, thanks for that. And thank you one and all for watching the videos, listening to the podcast, uh, joining in on Thursday Night Knives and uh, all the rest. It's greatly appreciated. Jim and I love you guys. And uh, well, Thanks for watching. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at what I was carrying during the pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. Today in my front right pocket, haven't been able to not have this on me at some in some position uh, during the day ever since uh, this was sent to me. I love this. Uh, this is from David Cam and Orion Knives. This is the Ares. Ares, the god of war. At least the uh, the Roman version, sort of pilfered from the Greek version. Um, no, I'm sorry. No, the Greek version, Ares. I always get that mixed up. Mars is the Roman version. Anyway, this is a beautiful uh, pivot lock knife. Yeah, that's right. The, the lock is right there in the center of the pivot. We've seen a few of these come out. I think. Um, uh, I guess I would say that uh, CRKT was the first with their bolt lock, their dead bolt lock, uh, to come out with this. But um, that was a totally different mechanism. What I'm talking about is the lock being located right there on the uh, pivot. Uh, this is more like a compression lock. So you see that folding leaf on the inside there? Let's see if we can get that to... You press that in, and it moves the uh, folding... It moves that uh, uh, spring clip out of the way. Here, let's do this. You can see it engage here. See that pop right over? So it's much like a compression lock. At the uh, folding leaf spring there fits into a notch on the tang of the blade, uh, keeps it secure, like very secure. Um, and I love that. I really like the mechanism. It's, it's pretty fidgety. It's got an awesome fuller from middle finger flicking. You can also just use the lock itself by squeezing it and popping it open. So I love all of that, but what I really love on this knife is that gorgeous blade. That is a beautiful drop point Tonto blade, putting the, putting the point right at center line and sort of um, uh, elongating that front straight portion. Uh, this is flat ground here, and then the rest is hollow ground. You can always tell that in pictures from the curve right here. If this bevel meets this bevel with a curved line, that means that uh, this portion here is hollow ground. If it meets in a straight line, that means they're both they're both flat ground. So um, 
just a beautiful, and, and they're both awesome. I like, you know, both styles, but I prefer the hollow grind. I just do. Uh, not only does it feel sharper to me and just like a little bit uh, thinner behind the edge, but also, uh, you know, I'm a shallow guy, I like the looks of a, uh, of a, of a hollow ground blade. I also like the look of this beautiful logo. It's Orion's belt there. You see those three stars there. Uh, and then the belt going through them. Beautiful knife. Thank you so much, David Cam of Orion Knives and also Blade Banter. Um, he puts out fewer videos now that he's running a knife business, but every once in a while he'll put out a video and they're excellent. He has, uh, he's a great evaluator of knives and his, uh, his videos are beautiful. I don't know what camera he's using, what lights, but he knows how to shoot video too. So a really excellent knife and I've been carrying it nonstop. By the way, uh, the ergonomics are great and neutral. Uh, they feel great in all grips, forward, reverse, pickal, standard. And it also has a sculpted pocket clip here. Very, very nice, which you can reverse to this side. The left side, the wrong side, sinestra. In Italian, it's sinestro, which means sinister. So those of you who are lefties are have a lot of spiritual work to do. All right, next up in my front left pocket, right next to, or front right pocket, right next to this, as I carry my phone in my left, is probably my favorite Jack Wolf knife release of the past year. I just, I can't quit you. I can't quit you, Venom Jack. This is the Jack Wolf knife, Knives Venom Jack. It's the second Venom Jack ever released, uh, coming about a year and a half after the first one. And man alive, is it beautiful. A lot of it, uh, I, I just like this knife in particular, the trap, the curved trapper handle, uh, that descending angle, um, Warncliffe blade, very, very effective cutter, a really, really excellent knife. But I got to say, the thing that won me over about this release in particular was this very incarnation of it. You know, Jack Wolf Knives always puts out knives in four or five different variations. This variation is possibly the most beautiful I've ever seen on, on a Jack Wolf knife. I know he's done this one other time uh, after this, but it's this dark acid stonewash bolster next to the dark matter red carbon fiber. It's just, it's stunning to me. And then how the uh, dark acid wash blade uh, matches the whole uh, package. It's just beautiful. And of course you have all of that incredible action you come to expect with Jack Wolf knives. This one is stout. It, I would call this on my totally random scale. This is like an eight and a half, eight and a half. And luckily, uh, much of the blade, uh, both open and close eight and a half, much of the blade protrudes above the handle. And seeing as it's a full height hollow grind gives you a great purchase for just opening it up with your uh, with your fingers, uh, you know, pinching it as opposed to putting your nail in the nail neck. If the nail neck were the only way to open this, uh, the strength of the spring might be a bit of a buzzkill. You know, sometimes things can be a little bit too hard to open if all you have is, is a nail neck. So uh, an excellent design and just perfect execution. I love the Venom Jack, especially in that dress. Next up, I carried this last week. I hadn't carried this in a long time, and I've been uh, um, enjoying a renaissance with it. It's the Nova One. This, of course, is my prototype, so that it's got that giant logo, which I love. I'm the only one in the world who's got it with the giant logo, and uh, I'm the only one in the world who wants it with that giant logo, but I love it. Uh, this is the Hogtooth Knives made um, Bob DeMarco co-designed Nova One. Uh, this was the one that started the Nova series. We're only two in, but we will keep going. And uh, I have some ideas for the Nova 3. It will be a little bit larger and double edgy. Uh, but here, this one is the recurve Bowie knife. I love this one. And I was carrying this uh, this uh, today because I got a picture from Matt Chase. He made a couple of these. Um, of course, they're not serialized, but he made a couple of these in the Nova 2 dress. So with the ivory micarta, and it looks so cool. And I have decided, well, you'll, you'll, this is just a teaser, uh, but you all will be very happy to hear what's going to happen uh, in the near future with that. Uh, so that's the Nova one I had in my three o'clock today and in my appendix. It moved around depending on what shirt I was wearing and how much I wanted to show the world 
what I was carrying. Last up, uh, this was purely for emotional support. My ESK today uh, was one that I don't really use, but I like to look at and gawk at because it's just so beautiful. Um, and it's my only real Navaja. So today I had the Sevillana from Boker. Sevillana, uh, that name refers to Sevilla, Sevilla, the uh, Spanish city that we sometimes call Seville. And that's where um, this knife hails from. It's one of the great steel capitals of the world for blades. You have Seki City, Japan. You have um, Sevilla, Spain. And uh, in Germany, you have um, mm, 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 Solingen. And uh, th so those are the old steel capitals of the world. Of course, there's Damascus and the great old US of A. Um, so this thing to me is absolutely beautiful with the stag handle. That's real stag and brass fittings. It's got that traditional horn shaped handle that looks like a steer's horn there. Uh, so bullfighting, you know, it, it's all kind of cultural there. And then you've got that gorgeous Spanish clip blade. You say, Bob, what's a Spanish clip, clip point blade? Uh, how I loosely define it, and I've I've gotten some buy-in from Miguel Barbudo. I talked to him about that in, at that Blade Show. By the way, he's a guy. If you want to gift me a really, really expensive and gorgeous uh, custom knife, uh, Miguel Bardu Barbudo will work for sure. But it's got a long, shallow uh, clip there. So a clip that spans half or more of the blade and is kind of shallow meaning uh, it leaves a lot of beef for quite a while until you get to the tip. Deep hollow ground blade. This is that molybdenum, uh, I can't even pronounce that element, but MOV4 uh, point, no, this is uh, MOV1.4116. And I think Cold Steel used that on some of their budget blades, um, but it's a, uh, I'm always thrown off by the element molybdenum and I don't really know how to say it. So I'll stop trying to say it. All right, this is what I had on me today. What did you have on you? I had the Aries from Orion Knives, the Venom Jack, the Nova One, and the Sevillana. Some beautiful blades. You know, the emotional support knife, the ESK, is there for exactly what it sounds like, emotional support. You might be having a rough day, uh, and you might think, well, I'm going to seek solace from one of my knives. And then you look at them. These are tools that help me do my thing. And I'm already having a bad day. Sometimes you just need something that's like a little artifact or a piece of art on you that you can just appreciate. And that's what the emotional support knife is for me. What is it for you? Tell me about your ESK. Drop it in the comments below. Uh, tomorrow, if you're watching this as it drops, is our November Knife Junkie giveaway. And uh, that is, of course, the Gentleman Junkie giveaway. Gentleman Junkie, the highest tier of support uh, on the old Patreon. And we are giving away this really cool knife given to the channel by none other than Dave of uh, OG Blade Reviews. Check that thing out. Uh, this is a Y Start, and they make really excellent knives. I thought, um, I, I know I've seen them on uh, Neve's channel, and I've seen them on. Um, I've seen them all over the place, but uh, I've seen Jared uh, show these off. Why starts are pretty damn sweet. They're Chinese knives made of, out of the finest materials. We have titanium here and a really nice carbon fiber inlay with no sp spaces, no um, glitches there. And then this beautiful single edged dagger blade. That's a D2 blade steel and a really, really fine uh, fine knife. It's on, uh, what do you call it? Bearings. And the thing that's distracting me, which I really love, and it's going to make it really hard to get rid of this knife, is that those quillions are waveable. I mean, you're looking at that and you're thinking, I could open that right on the seam of my pocket. And you're right. As you pull this thing out, uh, you can uh, engage these quillions or this quillion here, and it will uh, open this up, making it one of the fastest knives out there. Um, I am going to call this a dagger blade because it is pretty much totally symmetrical. However, it's only single edged, uh, but I'll forgive it in this case. Um, really nice pommel. The pommel, the way it flares, you know, uh, is sort of wasp wasted and then flares back out. Reminds me of a modern interpretation of the Fairbairn Sykes pommel. So a really beautiful knife. Dave, thank you so much for gifting this to our uh, viewers and patrons through me. I really appreciate it, of course. And uh, 
There it is. If you want to win this knife, oh, sculpted titanium pocket clip. Very nice sculpted titanium pocket clip. Uh, echoes the shape of the blade and looks beautiful on this micro milled handle. Uh, if you want to win this knife, go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And uh, every third Thursday of the month, we give away a knife here. And uh, it's always pretty sweet. And uh, most many of the times uh, they are donated to the channel by OG Blade Reviews, who's got a stellar and sprawling collection. So I thank you, sir. And uh, look at how well that fits in the hand. Um, see, not all daggers fit well in hand in this sort of saber grip. This one has a pinch point right here uh, below the quillions on both sides. So the thumb fits in there very nice. Handles long enough. And as it slenders out, uh, really accommodates the hand and the palm there. So really cool knife from Y Start. Thank you very much. So this will be the Knife Junkie uh, giveaway knife tomorrow night, November 21st, 2020. Or. All right, be sure to go to Patreon. Uh, we have a QR code you can scan, or you can go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Check out the different tiers of support we have. There is that uh, QR code. Can't believe I got that wrong after all these years, pointing in the wrong direction. Um, just scan it with your phone, and it'll take you right there. You can see what we have to offer you when you're offering us something, uh, which is really, really greatly appreciated. All right, coming up, we have Knife Life News. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. You're listening to The Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's The Knife Junkie with The Knife Life News. We got four really cool new folders uh, to show you today. Uh, first from Vosteed Knives. Vosteed Knives. What, a, what an interesting company. It started off uh, where the owner of the company did a, um, uh, a uh, crowdfunding um, campaign for the Morgan, which is an excellent kitchen knife that they sent uh, a while back. And we that's main rotation in our kitchen uh, right now. It's, it's between uh, the um, Steve Kalari Custom Knives and the Vosti. Those are the knives that get used in our kitchen right now. Really, really excellent. Anyway, Vosteed has a whole bunch of folders that have come out since then, and this is the latest. It's a, a little beauty. It's called the Martin. Not Martin like Martin Scorsese, but Martin like the animal you kill to make fur uh, coats with. Uh, this is an in-house design, 2.98 inches of one of my favorite steels, an everyday steel, 154 cm. I say every day, but it's also favored by custom knife makers. Um, so this is a drop point, very, very nice drop point, kind of broad with a, with a, it's not a 50, 50 choil. It's more like a 75, 25 choil. So if you want to get up a little bit closer to whatever you're cutting, you can, uh, uh, put your finger in there. We've got the thumb stud there and a beautiful aluminum handle, uh, that's anodized with really nice, hor um, diagonal milling. I just think it looks really nice, looks comfortable in hand. Um, but I think what you're probably looking at is that button lock. Yes, it's a button lock, but it's not your average button lock. It's actually nothing like your average button lock. It's more like the Aries I just showed you here. It's a compression lock, uh, but it's actuated with the button there. And we've seen this um, now more and more, and I'm not gonna call it a compression lock because technically that's not what it is. I think um, they're calling it a top liner lock. I think compression locks are still, uh, under patent, and so we can't really uh, do that. But you disengage it with the button. Beautiful aluminum handle here, three inch blade available now from Vosteed. So go to Vosteed.com. Uh, next up, this is a gorgeous one, probably the most tempting uh, giant mouse I've seen since that uh, beautiful clip point they put out uh, two years ago. <clears throat> this is the GM12. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the naming convention for Giant Mouse, uh, most of the knives we see these days coming out of Giant Mouse are in their Ace lineup. The Ace lineup uses good materials, like pretty excellent materials, but not the finest. And they're kind of always available. But the GM series are, are the finest materials, the most complicated machining and designs with uh, very limited release. So that's what we're talking about here. This is the GM12. 
and Man Alive is that a beauty? <clears throat> so apparently it's Puko inspired. I guess I see that a little bit in the blade, but uh, Jens, uh, Jens Anzo and Jesper Voxnes, I hope I'm not butchering their names, but we, we all know Enz, uh, Anzo and Vox, they're Danish. And of course the Puko is a knife from their part of the world. So uh, I'm sure it inspires things in ways uh, that we're unaware of with our uh, uh, American eyes. But anyway, a beautiful, beautiful knife here. At first, it's uh, kind of an upswept blade, ever so slightly upswept, 3.3 inches of, yes, magna cut, full flat ground with a choil and a flipper and an opening hole. And that's that's sort of their, that sort of lozenge shape is their uh, usual signature opening hole shape. So it looks, definitely looks like a giant mouse. Uh, the, uh, handle has that beautiful humpback design. So a, uh, it's going to nestle in the palm really nicely. The whole handle itself is contoured and rounded. And then it's got this beautiful, if you look closely at it, beautiful wavy, uh, micro milling in it. So it's got a texture that looks really cool. And, uh, it's, it just looks comfortable. I mean, right. You're, you're looking at it too. It looks like it would just melt into the hand. Uh, really nice button lock. I like that um, pivot collar that extends. It's sort of like a figure eight. It extends around the pivot and then up and over the button lock. Uh, so really nice. Uh, 400 of these made in the configuration you're looking at right now with the <clears throat> stonewash blade and the, and the sort of raw looking titanium handle. And then they're making 200 of the GM12P. What does P stand for? pirate that's right pirate uh it is an all black model uh that sort of um, channels that more badass uh, spirit i guess that pirates do there you're, you're looking at it right there uh between a bottle of whiskey and a uh, tumbler and a little skull so yeah a little bit more pirate like um i guess that might be rum if we're talking pirates can't tell uh but i like the look of both of these only making 200 of the black ones so 600 all day long of the GM 12, uh, go get yourself one. Cause they're, if they're not gone yet, they will be really quickly. Uh, there are some ravenous giant mouse fans out there who are all over these kind of drops. All right. Next up, this is from Benchmade. Uh, this is a, an exciting one from Benchmade. I don't usually say that, but, uh, this one looks really cool. Going back to their, uh, roots, with the Bally song, which they did at the beginning of the year. Also with the, what the heck was that one called? Mm, can't remember what the, there was a very big one from uh, the, the open of the year. This is the 82 Laro. And unlike the one that came out in Q1 of this year, this is a, a more um, EDC friendly size. <clears throat> uh, traditionally a Bally song has a four and a quarter or four and a half inch blade and a bigger handle. And so they're overall larger knives, but uh, this uh, 82 Laro has been brought down into the 3.6 inch bladed category here. So that's a 3.6 inch Magna Cut blade, a beautiful drop point with a nice long swedge and a fuller and um, the butterfly logo, the Benchmade butterfly logo. Now Benchmade was originally called Bally Song, Bally Space Song. Um, referencing what they were making at the time uh, which is the butterfly knife and that's where that butterfly logo comes from these handles on this are integral titanium meaning they are one piece of titanium and all the rest is milled out the channel in the center that accommodates the blade and all of those lightning holes uh, are all from one solid piece of course it's more expensive to do it that way you waste all, i shouldn't say waste but a lot of <clears throat> titanium goes unused and uh, turns to powder and ends up uh, in in the maker's lungs and all over the place, but not on the blade. And that makes it pretty expensive. It's a lot of uh, milling time. Apparently, it's, it's pretty harsh on the mill. And also, a lot of uh, that material goes unused. So I'm sure this will be uh, priced accordingly. This one has no pocket clip like most... Uh, like most butterfly style knives, this one has no pocket clip, but comes with a Bolteron belt sheath that has a pocket clip. Bolteron is similar to Kydex, if you're wondering. Uh, 4.3 ounces and available now. Go check it out. Uh, this That's another one that I bet will 
will go quickly as people love their Benchmade Bally songs. Last up, uh, I'm going to quote Ben Schwartz from Knife News. I love his writing and <laughs> something he said here. Uh, this is the new Civivi. Uh, um, a very cool workaday knife, uh, hard, hard use kind of chunkier knife. And I love it. They put Civivi and Sencut have put out a few like the uh, Practisk is is also a, a nice kind of simple and hard use knife that I've been carrying quite a lot with that yellow handle. This one's called the Plasoid. I think it's soid and not coid. The Plasoid. And uh, when I saw that name, I was like, ah, oh, Stavivi, again, just making up words that sound close to other words. Like I was thinking placid. And they're like, it's not placid, but it's Plasoid, you know. Um, <clears throat> but lo and behold, I, I looked it up and then I read the article and, and uh, Ben Schwartz mentions this. He says, Savivi is constantly ransacking the dictionary for obscure words to name their knives. And I, I thought that was perfectly stated. Yes, they're <laughs> ransacking the uh, English dictionary. But plasoid is actually a thing. It's the denticles, it's scales on sharks or rays that are sharp when you, you know, if, if I'm a shark and I'm moving through the water this way, uh, it's real smooth. But if I go backwards on it, I'm going to cut up my hands on these denticles. They're like little teeth scales. And that's what a plasoid is. So, uh, you know, 4D underwater chess in the naming convention of Civivi. I just thought they were making stuff up. But indeed, a plasoid is a real thing. 3.6 inches. I am calling this a wide clipped drop point. Yeah, that's right. A drop point. But it's kind of clipped. It's not just a smooth drop. So that's what we're calling it here. 14C28N. Um, and if you're looking at this, you can probably tell from that handle, it looks a little unusual. Now, you'll be able to get uh, this knife in coarse uh, black G10, coarse green G10, and, and, and of course, the wooden model with uh, the, the Damascene blade. But the fourth model is this, and it's so cool looking. That's a very unusual material. It's called uh, Shred G10. We've all heard of shred carbon fiber. Well, this is a similar concept. Uh, very nice looking. And uh, this is smooth in hand. Um, so a rare material there. 4.6 ounces on this. <clears throat> pretty nice and ergonomic and pretty beefy folder. Uh, and that'll be coming soon to a store near you. Who knows? Maybe even... Uh, Walmart. I've been at Walmart recently, and yes, you're seeing some of the Civivis. Uh, three models I saw uh, there, and uh, so thrilled to see them there. One of them was the, um, oh, well, anyway, go check it out yourself. Uh, Civivi names always kind of confuse me a little bit, but I know it wasn't the Practisk, and it definitely wasn't the uh, Plasoid either. Um, so, there you go. Check out that Civivi. All right. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to check out the state of the collection. I got something very cool uh, from a very generous and talented viewer. We'll check that out in one moment. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. The KnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. This week, I received something that's been in the works uh, for about, I don't know, a month or, or so uh, from a very talented and generous viewer. Uh, his name is Kenneth, and I'm just going to go that far because... Uh, he, he's not officially up with his business and I don't know how much he wants me to, uh, say his name, but this thing is beautiful. And I'm talking about my new background, my new leather mat here, uh, the knife junkie. Of course, you can see that logo and, uh, it's not an easy logo we learned here because of all of those vertical lines, uh, which I didn't have to put in there, but I just always, <laughs> I just liked them. So I put them in there and, and they're kind of a pain in the butt. It turns out when you're making a leather mat or anything else. Uh, so this is two-sided. You can see also the knifejunkie.com website there. Two-sided, you have this side and then a beautiful and sumptuous backside here. 
Oh, that sounded weird. Beautiful and sumptuous backside. <laughs> uh, but really dark, gorgeous looking leather. Uh, a bit shiny, so it 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 uh, flares off that light. That will go away over time. Um, but also the same setup here with with the uh, with the Knife Junkie website on the bottom and the logo there. Man, I am so impressed by Kenneth's work here. It is so beautiful. Uh, not only is the leather handled and treated really, really well, but the uh, the engraving. I, I'm I'm assuming it's laser engraving. Um, either that or he's talented with a small chisel uh, is just really, really nice. I'm excited for, for Kenneth and I hope that uh, he can parlay this into a, a side hustle if he hasn't already. And uh, if he does, I will help him get the word out because uh, I'm really impressed with this. And I think that there are a lot of people, not just knife dorks like myself. I think there are a lot of people who would like and would benefit from something like this. Uh, Say you're not even on the internet and you're just uh, someone who likes uh, to have a leather desk mat. This would be ideal for that. Um, my dad used to have a cool big leather desk mat. Um, or if you want to use this as a surface to open up um, your knives and and that kind of thing and and uh, and swap out parts and all that, this would be ideal for that too because it, it would be gentle on the knife, but it's also tough, uh, tough leather. So all the parts would... Uh, sit nicely on it without getting scratched. Uh, and yet still you can go to town on the leather itself. So really, really beautiful work. Thank you so much, Kenneth. And uh, as time goes on, if you open this up uh, to more people, let me know and I will let the world know because, man, it is gorgeous. Speaking of the website, as you can see right here, the website is thenifejunkie.com. And if you go to thenifejunkie.com, uh, you can see all the videos we produce here, whether it's uh, the midweek supplemental, which you're watching right now, the Sunday interview show with a uh, new knife maker, manufacturer, reviewer, or knife world luminary uh, every Sunday, or Thursday Night Knives. You can see them all there, but you can also uh, read, the, uh, read various articles there, uh, sign up for the newsletter there, and merch. We have some really cool merch. Check out this. Now, this is something Jim just uh, just came up with, and man alive, he showed it to me, and I I busted out laughing. Knives, making sandwiches possible. And uh, yeah, exactly. I come up here, I show you, I'm about to show you a bunch of wicked recurves that you could go to battle with. Uh, but really, knives for most of us, like myself, make sandwiches and other everyday things possible. So don't forget, they're not just beautiful weapons or beautiful artifacts or really, really well-made and engineered trinkets that we like. They make sandwiches possible. So go to thenifejunkie.com, check everything out there. Check out the t-shirts, t-shirts, the merchandise, that's knifejunkie.com slash shop or the videos, whatever you want. But it is Knife Junkie Central. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at all these wicked recurves I had out for Thursday Night Knives that we didn't look at. We're going to get to the recurve roundup. Okay. Uh, first up, this one came to me. It didn't come to me. I came to it in 1991. Now, I know that a lot of you weren't even alive then, weren't even a glimmer in your parents' eye then, but I was. And what it was I was doing was uh, searching the field for you, knowing that this would all happen, knowing that you would come along, um, uh, and knowing that I years in the distant, you know, future would become, uh, someone that I call myself the knife junkie. So here is the knife that I got to start this all off and to show you, and it's a recurve Boston, 1991, uh, Newberry street. There was a knife shop downstairs in a basement, and I'm sure it's not there. I'm betting. Uh, just knowing Massachusetts law now. Uh, but this is the knife I got there. And I was so, so excited about this. Um, this is the SOG. There we go. Stingray. And it is a beautiful little recurve that has a blade very, very similar to the Mac V SOG. Uh, it's that bowy shape. And man, it, it really... It does it for me, and it did it for me then, and it just goes to show that uh, taste is taste. You you like what you like, and I've always liked this kind of knife, clip point and recurved. Uh, this one has a rubberized uh, sort of craton handle, 
and uh, steel bolsters, uh, uh, integral with the polished steel liners. Actually, no, they're not. I'm speaking out of school. I can tell they're not. Uh, but a back lock, very strong back lock. Never once was there a uh, lock rock in this. And um, But it you didn't used to be able to just close like that. It's through years and years of having it. You can just uh, one-handed close this. A beautiful knife that started it all. I remember carrying this thing uh, all summer long, and um, I had it. The thing I like about it is that you could drop it in the pocket, and with the grippiness of this handle, which I have to say, after all these years, is starting to feel like might be, you know that you know how rubber gets maybe a little too grippy, and it feels like it might be sort of coming apart at a molecular level. That starts what I'm starting to sense here. Um, but I loved how the grippiness of the handle kept this north to south in my pocket, as opposed to most pocket knives uh, that I had up until that point, which just fell horizontal uh, at the bottom of your hand, uh, your pocket. So the one that started it all in terms of A, tactical folders for me, and B, uh, love of recurves, is this right here, the SOG Stingray. Next up, uh, the knife I was carrying when my first daughter was born, for those of you who care, <laughs> is the Cold Steel Spartan. Man, I love this uh, knife, the Cold Steel Spartan. This came out hot on the heels of the movie 300. And um, I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's why they called this the Spartan. But deep recurve, deep, deep recurve blade. Looks like a kukri in a lot of ways. Uh, but but it's really based on the copus, the ancient Greek copus, from which the um, the kukri is descended. Uh, kukri, of course, from Nepal, but a lot of people were moving around, especially uh, Alexander the Great, and I think that's how the copus uh, shape kind of made its way into the, that part of Asia, <clears throat> where uh, India is, and then Nepal. Uh, this is Aus. Eight. This is a very old one. Uh, Os eight, at least fifteen or fourteen years old. So I, I'm guessing it's about fifteen years old. Uh, deep uh, hollow ground, and that Os eight was blasted. So it looked cool, you know, it had that dull finish. But blasting, medium blasting on a steel blade creates many, 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 you know, billions of little micro, maybe not billions, I don't know, but many, many, many little micro um, pits, and those pits can fill with sweat. I remember this thing uh, in the summer would, would get rusty uh, and they can just corrode really easily. So I took sandpaper to this and, and kind of uh, sanded through the blasted uh, surface and I've never had that problem since. A uh, long time I had a lanyard on this for a long time with, with uh, three uh, quarter inch nuts on the back. Uh, and I took it off because I thought it looked cool, but every time I would uh, practice swinging this thing around, those heavy metal steel nuts would swing around and and crack my knuckles. And I was like, this this does not make any sense. Really incredible handle here. I mean, this thing will never come out of your hand unless you're just a lamo. And uh, I think it looks beautiful too. I like the way that looks on the pommel. You could use that for noggin knocking, but really, it's it's there to keep it in your hand. Uh, I always thought this one was a great candidate for a six inch or a five and a half inch version, and they never listened to me. So their their loss, I guess, and mine. One of the stiffest ac uh, uh, um, triad locks in my collection. This one, I, I basically, I can't really use my thumb for this. I really have to use my forefinger. Maybe my forefingers are stronger or something, but... Uh, this one has always been a super, super stout triad lock. All right. Next up, this is probably my most recent recurve. Now, this was inspired by, uh, let me let me just take a little break for a second to show you. It was inspired by this, the Turner CNC Gin, like this whole recurve conversation. Uh, it's so, so beautiful. It's so not mine. And it I so have to ship it <laughs> to Jock. Thank you, Jock, for loaning this to me. I really, really, really love it. Uh, I really, really, really want one. You can order these when they're available, double-edged or single. He got the single, but it the swedge is so thin, you could, you could make it uh, double. So this is the most recent uh, recurve that has reawakened the love or has kept that 
fire stoked. Uh, but before that, and one that I actually own myself, that made a suspect noise in there. I want to make sure I didn't damage it. Okay. Uh, my most recent and beloved recurve is this, the Microtech Amphibian, which started life. Uh, this design started life in 2006, and only very few were made. And it didn't look exactly like this, but definitely had... Uh, most of the same design cues. It was extremely exclusive. And then I believe they did some, um, some real fancy versions of it, uh, you know, coming out of the, the Marfione custom shop. But so happy to see that years later, they released this wide, uh, widely and put it within reach. Um, you know, Microtech, I feel like they've brought their prices down like ever so slightly. They're still expensive. Uh, this was over 300 bucks, but not so far over 300 bucks like I feel they used to be. And and you can look at some of the automatics and they go up precipitously in price. But uh, this is just your standard amphibian and with, with serrations. Um, I love the serrations on this. And all Microtechs, I just dig their serrations a lot. And somehow they integrate them into the blade without, I don't know, without making them look. I think it's because the, the teeth sit proud of the main edge. They look like they're more a part of the full on design. Whereas I look at Benchmade, um, Griptilian, say, for instance, uh, serrations. You can tell that the blade was made first and then they cut into the blade. So they kind of look like an afterthought. Um, and the transition from serration to main edge is a rough one. Uh, here, it's not. It's it's totally integrated into this curve. And by the way, I think serrations on a recurve just take the 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 strength, the cutting strength of a recurve, which is you have that curve which is biting into the material feeding the material into the cut here in, in that hollow portion. Well, you add serrations there and it just accelerates the cutting by, uh, I don't know how much, but by a lot. And I really, really love that. You have an overall curve of this. If you look at the spine of both the blade and the handle, that translates to the cutting edge. And that also makes that recurve even more effective. So as you're as you're cutting, say in a normal saber grip like this, you can see how much further down from my knuckles all of that cutting action is. So uh, a wicked blade, but also this in this case is just beautiful and cool looking piece of futuristic tactical uh, knifeage here. I mean, to me, it looks futuristic with an excellent uh, uh, bar lock here, but it's not really a, a, a bar lock like a traditional bar lock. This is their ram lock. So you have a, a big block of uh, titanium, I think, or steel here that moves forward with a, with a coil spring, not two omega springs, uh, and um, blocks the tang from movement. So a real solid, solid lock, but also fidgety as the day is long. So if you like that, uh, you you will love this. Uh, you got a filler tab over here. Beautiful clip. I love the jimping on the clip. I was carrying this uh, yesterday, um, and I kept I kept touching that. <laughs> I love the jimping on the clip. Makes it real easy to draw. But so do do these screws. Ordinarily, I don't like big screws. I don't like uh, that much showing from a knife. But the knife is long enough that uh, that the screws don't bother me and the, the clip placement doesn't bother me. But those screws also aid in drawing the knife. They're on both sides and they uh, create a very positive pinch point. The back strap is really cool too. Gear pattern. I'm just crazy about this knife. This is sculpted G10 uh, milled with <clears throat> diagonal texturing here. Uh, but you can get this also in aluminum and the price is the same, which I think is cool. That is the uh, Microtech Amphibian. Next up, this is the knife that I say its custom version is definitely my grail folder. And that is the Boker Squail, um, which is based on the uh, Marlowe Squall. That's Charles Marlowe. He is a incredible custom knife maker who... <clears throat> does not produce a whole lot of knives. He uh, 
he works tirelessly on on these models and they uh he works a long time on them and they are really really refined uh there's one gentleman on instagram that i follow who has a number of these uh in in custom and i don't know how much they cost i know they're very hard to get and i'm sure uh price is commensurate but um this one will will do me until the real thing gets here uh this is a vg10 ground um VG10, very deeply hollow ground, a beautifully made knife by Boker. When this was released, they also had another one uh, from him, and it was a little micro series. The other one was called the Pup, I think. It was a little clip point uh, smaller than this. That is a four-inch blade. Uh, you have titanium bolsters and G10 handles. This also came out with a red, I mean, I'm sorry, with a green micarta version, but when I was buying it was only tipped down and I thought, oh my God, why, why? Uh, because of course my preferred dress would be a uh, green micarta on this, but uh, I got the G10, black G10 and it's never, uh, it's never bummed me out because it does come with that cool and small spoon clip uh, that has the same screw configuration as the classic Benchmade slash Emerson screw configuration. So you could put a lot of different clips on this uh, if that were your druthers, but it shouldn't be because I think the clip fits beautifully uh, in the overall design. I think, I've mentioned this many times, but I think when you hold a knife upside down and look at it upside down, you really see the shape in a better way. It kind of abstracts it a little bit. And to me, that is just a phenomenally beautiful drop point. You don't hear me say that a lot. And just an absolutely gorgeous recurve here. VG10, uh, I am seeing some, there we go. I was seeing some fingerprints on it, but Man, is that beautiful. Again, an egg-shaped opening hole and a great thumb uh, uh, thumb ramp here with jimping. Uh, I, that was the one ding I had against this knife, is that that jimping, you could have sawed through red oak with that. It was so uh, aggressive. So I knocked it down with a diamond stone, you know, a couple of passes with a diamond stone, made it tolerable to my thumb. Beautiful recurve. Uh, like I said, so thin, so hollow ground, and so recurved. This makes for a wicked, wicked cutter. That is the Boker Squale based on the, the Marlowe, the Charles Marlowe Squall. Beautiful, beautiful knife. All right, next up, this is a classic. I know you were thinking of it when I was showing you the CNC Turner uh, Gin, which is inspired by a bunch of Middle Eastern knives, but very much I see the uh, the Turkish Yatagan influence there. Well, that's what we have here in the cold steel uh, Vakiro shaped blade. This is the, in this case, this is the five and a half inch Voyager Vakiro, uh, Lynn Thompson model, uh, signature model. That means in this case that it's all of the signature models have that uh, green grivery here, uh, but this one had XHP steel. Uh, I have one other signature series knife. It's a uh, Chris from him, and it's in like 440, I think. So they use different steels for the different models, um, <clears throat> for the different signature models. But really what I'm getting at here is that recurve blade. Uh, it is incredibly aggressive. And then you put the serrations, uh, forget about it. I mean, just super, super aggressive. Now, if you know anything about Lynn Thompson, he is also a very aggressive guy. And, you know, he attacked the knife world with his company and created an amazing uh, bastion of modern knife production. He's a very talented martial artist who's been training for years and years and years. And uh, in person, um, when I say aggressive, I don't mean in a jerky way. He's just very, uh, he's aggressive in conversation in a good way. Um, I remember he, we were talking knives and he's like, are you saved? And I said, well, not in the way you mean, but I'm, I'm a Catholic who has, uh, who, who's reigniting his faith. And, uh, you know, we got right into it. He, you know, he just, so he's aggressive in all ways. He thinks that this is the greatest knife he's produced in terms of, I shouldn't say what he thinks. He carries two of these on his person at all times. Two recurved serrated Vaquero, uh, Vaquero Voyagers, not the signature model. And um, simply because he thinks they're the most wicked uh, in a fight. And I, I can't disagree with him. I, of course, put the Snaggletooth uh, MF on there. That's this little uh, aftermarket pocket wave 
from Snaggletooth out of New Jersey. They make some really cool products uh, for removable thumb stud knives. You can add to open your knives like the Wave on the on the Emerson knives. But uh, again, we're talking recurves. So look at that recurve, just unreal. And then the, the handle, of course, uh, is great. Will stay in your hand all day long. This is an ungainly list. I think I'm talking too much about each one. So I'm going to I'm gonna start breezing through them a little quicker here so you're not here all day. Uh, I know you got to get back to work. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is the M1 from uh, Combative Edge. Uh, this is a, an older one. Um, I think 2010 or so this came out. I remember I was still watching Nothing Fancy when this came out, and Nothing Fancy had the the dude who who designed this on his on his uh, show uh, on his vid in one of his videos. I think they they did a run and gun video. Really, really nice. This is made by um, uh, Lion Steel in Italy. Very thin. Uh, you can get this still. Uh, it has changed a little bit. I know there's an automatic version of this, which is very cool. There's also a Tonto version of this. But I fell for that recurve clip point blade immediately. So I had to have this one. Uh, I haven't carried this one in a little while. The one thing I don't like about this knife is that extra long pocket clip. I think that's an off-the-shelf uh, lion steel pocket clip. It looks very similar to my uh, big Drago tack by Bastinelli, also made by um, Lion Steel. Titanium frame lock, um, the steel on this one. What is this? Oh, N690 CO as per uh, Italy. Uh, this does not stick in my cross so much. Look, look at how it flips open. Ready? Watch. Uh, that I don't care. When it came out, people weren't all uptight about flippers. Uh, that flipper was really a lot more about uh, being a finger guard because this is a tactical knife uh, for cut and thrust and everything else. So you want a guard so you don't slide up on there. Uh, but yeah, it takes a lot of wrist to open it. But hey, are we all cream puffs? No, we can use a little wrist. Not a big deal. I love this knife and I love that colorway. I just hate the word colorway. All right, next up, this is from Jason Knight, Fox Knives and Elements, Tactical Elements. Uh, this is the uh, MK Ultra. Now you can just go buy this from Fox, but when it first came out, it went through a couple of different uh, partnerships. I know Doug Markaita, was involved in the very first uh, iteration of this. I think he was just the guy who got Jason in the door at Fox. I could be mistaken, but um, really beautiful Kukri style recurve. And in my opinion, um, the finest uh, looking folder, folding Kukri in terms of a traditional Kukri, uh, especially with that handle. And then the blade shape is... Um, is Jason Knight all day long. He does some really, really fantastic looking kukris here. This is kind of harpooned, uh, if you want to call it that, with a place to put your thumb and then that big fuller there. Um, not too effective at middle finger flicking. You have to kind of make sure you're very loose. Uh, your grip is a little bit loose and you're not holding down that, uh, that uh, lock bar there. But an excellent folder, super smooth, and uh, that's Two, uh, that's four and a quarter inches in blade length, but the overall curve of the knife makes it feel much more carryable than you might think a four and a quarter inch blade is. Absolutely stunning, an awesome knife. Everyone, when I show this off, uh, people frequently ask me how to get one or say they're, they're going to get one because they love it so. All right, <clears throat> here's an OG. This is the Zero Tolerance Ken Onion designed zero two zero zero uh really really beautiful knife um look at that blade it reminds me a lot of the boker squale uh you have that nice uh pronounced thumb ramp with jimping uh a nice drop point uh spine with a deep recurve and on this deep recurve yes we have serrations these little weird bread knife we have a we have a bread knife in the house that looks a lot like that, the serrations. And it's weird on a folding knife. You didn't see it too much uh, on any knife, any ZT or Kai knife, but it's on these. And uh, I think they abandoned that serration shape. Um, but it's kind of neat, and I kind of like it. My brother gave me this out of his pocket, basically. Uh, that's how generous my brother is. I was like, oh, that's cool. He's like, here, have it. I never carry it. 
And uh, I was like, oh, okay, well, you're carrying it right now. And he's like, yeah, but I never carry it. So take it. I'm like, my gosh, I lucked out. I did luck out on the, on the, um, on, in the family lottery. I, I sure did. Uh, but look at this handle. Very thick. Uh, it's got a cool uh, checkering pattern. And when you turn it this way, you can see it's, it's got more of a fixed blade handle in that it's Coke bottled and uh, just very nicely contoured. Fits the hand great, locks in the hand. I never carry this. I rarely carry this, but why not? I don't know. I think it might be time for a renaissance of this knife too. The, the zero tolerance, zero, two, zero, zero. Just a beautiful recurve blade. And before I put it away, I'm going to show you this next to this. Because I think they have a, a similar look uh, to, the, to the blades. And I like them both. All right. And if you're just listening, I just held the, the Zero 0200 next to the uh, Boker Squale. They have similar blades. All right, next up, we were just talking about Kukri's, and Kukri is the most obvious recurve out there, I guess. Here is the Raja 2 from Cold Steel. A lot of Cold Steel on this list. I tried to punctuate it, uh, punctuate the list with Cold Steels because I didn't want it to be just a Cold Steel fest. Um, really excellent handle on this long knife. You got the horse hoof pommel here uh, with the up scoop on the back. Really makes it uh, re rebound against the palm. Gives you great security in hand and a way to uh, a way to recover from a chop. Uh, you have the corresponding pinky um, groove there uh, to aid in that. So handle is outstanding. You can you can come all the way up here for finer work, as they say, or middle grip forward grip or all the way back so a lot of different ways to grip this six inch bladed knife that's a seven inch handle so you better have uh, different grips there but look at that beautifully shaped kukri blade um so again you're getting that really deep deep recurve uh i guess i haven't defined my terms for me a recurve starts with an upward uh, an ascending curve and then a deep descending curve and then and then terminates in a belly and a point. Um, you'll see in a minute there's another knife that I'm calling a reverse recurve and you'll see what that's all about. Uh, this is that blasted finish I was telling you about uh, on the Spartan. I uh, never really sanded it off this because I never really carried this one much. It is a bit heavy. Uh, the the um, clip is positioned audaciously low and is quite quite large so you're carrying this the whole world knows you're carrying it um, but it's got this thumb plate that allows you to wave it open of course it's got the triad lock and um, the one good thing about having that clip so low is that when you grab the knife out of your pocket it really makes it easy to get a really good handhold on the handle this is not one of those knives that you want to have a minimum grip on as it's coming out and and waving open because that's a that's a big damn knife to have just gripped at the butt here like that. Uh, Raja two, uh, the Raja one had the polished G10 and aluminum handles and the and the shiny blade, um, so that's why this is the two. All right, next up, this is a also a Kukri inspired knife. This is the Kami. I'm not going to talk much about this. You've seen a lot of this recently. This is the uh, Dirk Pinkerton designed Kami from Artisan Cutlery. So beautiful. This is the S35 model, S35 VN with micarta and um, titanium uh, frame lock. If you want the fancy, fancy version, uh, you can get this in S90V with a full titanium frame. You got that chamfering, broad chamfering that makes it feel like it's contoured. Such a nice knife. Yeah, that's pork fat. Pork fat is a great way to stain your micarta. I don't care. All right, next up. This is a beauty. This is the first knife I spent a lot of money on, I think. Uh, in 2013, I, I bought this. This is the Uliza from Spyderco. And uh, it's, it's the Uliza is, uh, the name comes from Ulrich, Ul Ulrich, which is uh, shortened by Uli Henniker. He's a former German police officer turned knife designer slash maker and this was part kind of loosely part of the police series because it has that 4.1 inch blade similar to the other police models uh, so it's pretty long has a nice overall curve which also aids that recurve in slashing uh chopping thrust uh, and uh 
cutting. These are also great for thrusting, by the way. That recurve really opens up a wide channel in whatever you're thrusting into. This is the Uliza, and, and if you hold this one in a, a standard a saber grip, it, it puts that point right down the center line, right where you want it. So you don't have to torque your wrist, do anything weird uh, to position your wrist to get it right where you need it to be. This one is out of print, unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find this on the secondary market. A lot of people are turned off by recurves because apparently they only have one sharpening stone and it's square and very broad, so they can't quite get it to sharpen. But uh, just get a triangle sharp maker uh, where the stone is that in the cross section or something rounded and sharpening, um, sharpening recurves is no big deal. Next one is more of a re re recurve, and that is this Voyager Chris model from Cold Steel. Chris, traditional um, uh, uh, sword slash blade shape with the wavy blade from, um, from the Philippines and um, Malaysia and Indonesia, very common down there. Also, you saw it in the Middle Ages in, in uh, Germany with the flamberge. Or is that France? Flamberge. I'm pretty sure that's a German sword. Anyway, uh, you look it up. You got the Google later. Check it out. Uh, this is a re re recurve, of course, because you've got that recurve, that recurve, and that recurve. So uh, that wavy blade to me, uh, not to be snarky, but I thought, man, that's the ultimate recurve. Uh, this one, of course, uh, Aus 10 blade steel because it's one of the newer uh, Cold Steel Voyagers. And I put a um, raw aluminum snaggle tooth on this one snaggle tooth mf for waving out of the pocket i think not only is it great to have this wave out of the pocket but i feel like that looks uh it, it's kind of in keeping with the traditional look of a chris beautiful re 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 curve here all right next up and uh, third to last in this sprawling list is the reverse recurve. That's what I'm calling it. Uh, this is the Black Talon. Uh, such a wicked knife. This one, um, on Thursday Night Knives, we have a lot of people who carry this knife. It is an excellent self-defense knife. Inspired, I'll say, by perhaps inspired by the Spyderco Civilian. It's got that S-curve. And it's a reverse recurve because I would call this a recurve. Say the tip were here, at the pivot instead of uh, at the pommel, uh, you have a recurve now. So here it's a reverse recurve because it starts with a belly, goes into the recurve and terminates at the point. Uh, you know, tomato, tomato, but uh, just also wickedly effective. Of course, it puts the point in a, in a very, very nasty place for slashing. Um, but it makes it very inconvenient for thrusting or anything like that. So you're not thrusting with this knife. What you can do, incidentally, is peck with it. Um, so if you have it back in your hand like this, you can use that point in a more drumstick fashion. Uh, also, it waves open with that thumb plate. So this is your reverse recurve black talon two from cold steel and of course why not get this one serrated it's already overkill you may as well you may as well go uh, uh full godilla on that one all right second to last is is a favorite from a favorite company and this is the emerson cqc 15 a, a very generous gift from bill s uh, years ago now um this is the Super CQC-15. I forgot to put Super in the in the lower third there, but uh, this is um, Ernest Emerson's combination of his two most popular blades to the point when this was designed. So you get the recurve from the Commander and then you get the Tonto Point from the CQC-6-7. Um, when this first came out, I remember thinking, ooh, that's awkward, but I... It isn't really. It's actually quite beautiful, if you ask me. I guess I'm not going to tell you what, what you think. But uh, I do have to say, though, the handle is much better for me personally. And I don't have giant hands in this super size. Uh, I had the standard CQC-15, and it felt a little snug uh, when going in that saber grip like this. Here, my whole hand can just kind of spread out there. My thumb can go all the way out. Um, but what's really important here to this conversation is that recurve. Um, a 
traditionally manufactured Emerson, meaning it's a chisel edged knife. Some of them are chisel ground, meaning it's not a V ground on the bevel, just flat on one side and then chiseled at the edge. This has the V ground uh, and the chisel, making it just astoundingly sharp. The chisel, the chisel edges are just so incredibly sharp. Um, kind of counterintuitively, but if you think about a V and then remove half of it, that's what you're getting. Uh, so it's just incredibly thin. Some people have difficulty with it tracking through materials slightly, uh, oddly, but uh, you know, it takes about uh, three inches of cutting something and then you realize uh, how it moves. So just a really wicked knife taking advantage of both the tanto, the strength of a tanto tip, but also the strength in slashing and cutting that you get in a recurve. Which brings me to the end, which is the Emerson Commander. So kind of going full circle, this was uh, this was another very, very early uh, tactical knife purchase for me, and that is the beautiful Emerson Commander. This is from the year 2000. You can tell uh, things are different, things have changed. The logo is a lot, uh, a lot more complex now with more information. Here you just have Emerson USA 2000. And the blade shape has changed a little bit. Look at that gorgeous long swedge. But the real thing that got me into this knife was that, that recurve blade. At the time, uh, I had just discovered the beauty of Filipino swords with their downward angled and recurved blades like the ones you see behind me. And uh, Ernest Emerson, being a Filipino martial arts practitioner, um, I'm sure was influenced by that. And... Uh, and this just knocked my socks off. I've carried this for years on and off. I haven't carried it in a while. Um, I tend not to carry it much now. I kind of see it as uh, something I, well, I definitely don't want to lose it or damage it. Um, so I don't carry it that much, but it's got old school style G10 here and an old school style construction. So you have to remove the scale on both sides. That's sort of an old custom way of doing it. Remove the scales and then you can uh, get to all of the structural stuff underneath beautiful beautiful knife and the superlative recurve in my collection i would have to say all right let me know what you think about recurves or we had someone can't remember who comment oh uh the guy from texas uh commented on thursday night knives that uh recurves uh tanto's rule recurves drool of course that's not true but let me know what you think of recurve blades do you like them are they pains in the buttocks to you uh, or do you like them so much cutting that you're willing to uh, go through the uh, very, very slight inconvenience in sharpening them? Thank you for joining me on this extended version of the Midweek Supplemental. It's been a pleasure. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share the show with a, with a like-minded friend. Uh, that really does help the show. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast